going on everybody and welcome back to Frankie's Aquatics right here on the wonderful platform that is YouTube. Now I hope you all had a fantastic week. I have had an interesting week. I've had loads of fun on Instagram this week. Thank you all if you've been over there joining in with the live streams. I did a live stream with Life With Axes, Hannah, her name is absolutely fantastic stream. Really enjoyed it. A bit disappointed because we can only have two people in at once. So I had to keep jumping out. A little bit deflating, but we had a good time anyway. It was great fun. So if you're one of the people that were in there, I hope you had a good time on there too. I have been kind of stepping up my game with my live streams. So if you don't already, do head over onto Frankie's Aquatics Instagram and give me a follow. Because I'm definitely going to be doing more live streams in the coming weeks. And I'm going to be doing my first live stream right here on YouTube as well. Never done a live one before, but I've hit the threshold now where I can actually do a live stream. So in the coming weeks, do get ready for a notification on your inbox. If you ding the bell, that is, then I'll be going live and I hope that many of you will join me. So this week's video is going to be talking about axolotls in the wild. Um, the, the rumor mill has it that axolotls are literally on the, on the brink of extinction, if not already extinct. So we're going to look at different factors like, some people say, well, if they're nearly extinct, how come they're so popular in the pet trade? There's literally thousands or thousands of axolotls in the pet trade. They're fairly easy to breed. They're pretty straightforward enough to raise. Why don't they just release some of them? So we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts and why you can't just simply release captive bred axolotls back into the wild to replenish the wild population. It's not as simple as that. But today's video is going to discuss as to why it's not as simple as that. Because it's a question and it's a valid question. So without further ado, let's go and take a little look at why axolotls are nearly, if not already, on the brink of extinction. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. So axolotls come from Mexico. The very first axolotl ever found was in a lake called Lake Xochimilco, I believe you pronounce it. Please don't tell me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. They're from a lake called Lake Xochimilco, which has unfortunately become very perished and very polluted and very unsuitable for these axolotls to continue to thrive. So down to human neglect, ignorance and oversight, we have unfortunately kind of made these beautiful creatures almost extinct, if not already extinct in the wild. Their waters have become tampered, they've become polluted, and it's been unsuitable for them to continue to thrive. Now, thankfully, axolotls are really popular in the pet trade, and God bless that they are. They're an incredible little critter that many of us enjoy looking at in our tanks, and my goodness, they bring happiness to many people. I do find it kind of sad that they're almost, if not already, gone in the wild, and we'll never have that chance to actually go and see them in the wild. I would love nothing more nothing more than to actually go to Mexico, try and seek and search out the lakes in which they once lived and hopefully have some some sort of success in finding them. Now I have, this is not just an idea in my head, I have really dug deep with this one. Um, I've contacted numerous people, I even got uh, wildlife conservationist Nick Baker. I even asked for his advice and even, even he drew a short and not, didn't quite know how, how best to advise me because when he did a documentary years ago, they were already on the blink then. So um, it's become an impossible task. This Frankie is reversing. True wild axolotls are pretty much impossible to find in the wild. They just don't exist. Numbers have plemished. It's a sad state of times and it's all been down to human error. Now, thankfully, the University of Mexico have kind of stepped up to try and replenish the natural 
um, the natural population, but unfortunately I do kind of feel they're kind of fighting a losing battle. Now, I've had no conversations with these guys. I would love nothing more than to get more involved. So if there's any way that you know I can get involved, any over, anybody over in Mexico that happens to see this video, please give me a shout. I'd love to help out both financially and one day hopefully physically. I'd love to go over there and actually help. So that's a possibility. Do, do kind of point me in the right direction. Because I ain't got a Scooby day where I'm going, to be honest. But do help out if you feel you can. Due to the poor conditions that humans have created, the axolotls unfortunately perished and in great rapid success. Uh, there was, there was, I believe there was a, there was fish that, that weren't native to Mexico that were introduced to the lakes as well, which also ate the axolotls. Humans were known to eat axolotls. They used to catch them back in the day, many, many moons ago, and they used to fry them and eat them. They were a class of a delicacy. And then over time, the number just continued to fall to the point where you can't find them. You cannot find the wild axolotl, at least not easily in the wild. I don't think they've actually declared them extinct yet, but they're very much close. We're talking a matter of percent before they actually are gone forever, which is heart-wrenching and sad. Now, the University of Mexico have stepped up their game. There's, there's a whole army of nuns, I believe, as well, that actually helped try and replenish and kind of revamp the wild population, but they are, they are, they are falling. Numbers are still falling and it's, it's almost fighting the impossible fight, but they're fighting it nevertheless. Literally thousands of axolotls happily reproducing within the uh, pet trade. Why can't we just simply produce more wild types and then re-release them back into these lakes or better, better preserved lakes that'll obviously do better. When I go for my walks in the country with my family, my kids always go, wow, imagine what Pixel would think of this big lake, like this big closed lake that we found. And yeah, she would love it. She'd have a great old time, but there's reasons why we're not allowed to introduce, do you, not, you can't just hatch out your own eggs and go and re-release them back into the wild. And there's, there's very good reasons for that. For one, they might not be native to your country. So while your axolotls that you've released might do absolutely splendidly well, they're gonna cause havoc for the natural environment in which you've placed them. They'll eat fish that, are, that are sh they shouldn't be eating. They'll cause numbers of fish to decline. They'll be eating themselves as well by other predators. They'll become really invasive and really intrusive. A bit like the Ninja Turtle boom. Can everybody remember this? It was like the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. Everybody went crazy for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, myself included. I absolutely loved them. And everybody went crazy in turn for that. Everybody wanted a turtle for a pet. And the yellow belly slider turtles, as we call them over here, the, the terrapins, uh, red-eared terrapins, I think we called them in this country at the time, um, were impossible to find in the pet trade. People were buying these little tiny turtles like, wow, I've got my own ninja turtle. A couple of years later, when the phase has finally worn off, and they've got a reasonably sized snappy turtle. They're re-releasing them into the lakes of the UK. Um, a local lake to where I live actually became infested with them. So much so that they had to go and go and euthanize uh, uh, thousands of them over the space of a three-year window. It's ridiculous. And that's just because our heart doesn't control our mind. We think we're doing good by releasing these turtles into the, into the wild. Oh, that's where they're meant to be. Let's release them. It's the same thing with axolotls. You're following your heart. You think you're doing a good deed by releasing something into the wild so it can live its life. But the truth be told, you're causing more harm than good because they're not native. They're intrusive. It's not good for the environment in which they live, which they're not native to. And they soon become a pest. And not only that, there's all sorts of laws against it too. So even if your heart does tell you, my little axolotl would love it out in the big lake across the road from where I live. It probably would if it didn't get eaten, that is. The truth be told, if he reproduces or you put more than one out there, they're going to quickly invade that lake and you're going to cause yourself an absolute lawsuit and a half. So don't follow this, follow this. There's laws against it and they're there for a reason. And not only that, they're not true wilds. If you're in captivity, all of the species that are within captivity have got part, ti part tiger salamander in them, I believe. The studies have been told. So they're not even completely true wild axolotls. They're actually a different sort. They're like a hybrid so there's all sorts of messiness that gets involved with there as well. So while I understand that people want to do things right and I think it's a lovely idea releasing them back into the wild, it's not as simple as that. Unfortunately, it really isn't. So if you do find yourself at a bit of a loose end and you happen to have some axolotl eggs or baby axolotls that you no longer care for, then don't be, don't be tempted to release them into the lakes and all that around you. Um, if they're fortunate enough to survive, they will become a hazard to your environment. They will not do well. And if they do decide to do well and do a little bit too well, 
you're probably going to find yourself in a whole heap of trouble because your environment and your natural habitats that live within that environment are going to suffer and likely perish because of the wild axolotls. Do you like the term wild there? It's not exactly a wild, is it? Why is it that humans didn't in intervene quicker? Why didn't humans intervene a lot quicker to make the wild axolotl population bigger, stronger, safer? Why didn't they protect that? Why didn't they put an umbrella around that when they knew the numbers were declining? There's a lot of questions to be answered. I'm sure efforts were made, but I think it just boils down to human ignorance. The lakes in which they lived were polluted, heavily polluted. Not just a slight tinge of a bit of rubbish here and there. I'm talking full of toxins and full of nasty things that were even killing the fish. It was, it was, it was perishing everything. And the fish that were being found there were very unhealthy. They were having birth defects. And unfortunately, it's just a very, very tarnished and horrible environment for them to be living in. Now, there are, play there are people out there that do try their best. I reached out to a charity called the Amphibian Foundation, which I proudly support each and every month. I'm part of their Patreon page, and I absolutely admire and can't help but tilt my hat to the efforts that they make. They obviously help axolotls, including it in the umbrella of the amphibian world. They do their bits, and they kind of really go above and beyond. I'll pop a link below. It's a really important video, which I think you should watch just to appreciate how much they actually do. And also just to appreciate how important amphibians are to our world. We can be very neglectful as humans to the importance of one animal compared to another. Some people might see a dog as a cute, lovey, lovely, fluffy animal that must be cared for. But they might view a frog or a fish in a completely different limelight. All animals are equal in their own right. In their own breath, all animals have got their right to be here. They've got as much right to be on this planet as we have. And I think it's the very least that we can do is help protect them. And the Amphibian Foundation do an absolutely stellar job of doing that. So do be sure to go over and check those guys out too. And if you can support, by all means, go and support them. If not, just share the message. I can't stress the importance of conservation. Uh, I go on about it a lot and I always help where I can. I always spread the word. I always help financially whenever I can. As humans, we can be so ignorant to what doesn't directly affect us. People look at things like, does that affect me? No, I don't mean to be rude, I'm not really bothered. But you need to look at things differently. Look at it like this, look at it like a seed. You plant the seed, you might not be around to see that seed grow into a tree, but believe that your family, your children's children will be. And there will be a day when they'll either be able to see that tree that you helped water, that you helped grow, and be, be, a, be a tree, or they're gonna fall short and just see an empty field. It's the best way I can describe it. Conservation is, is, is key, it really is key. Steve Irwin, the late great Steve Irwin said it himself. He said that it's, um, he lives for wildlife and he lives for conservation. And I can absolutely see his drive and his passion. And I can completely appreciate why he felt so strongly about that. I really can, even Tia just kind of just jumped up in excitement, didn't you Tia? She's so stinky today, isn't ya? You? You're so stinky. You keep trumping. I don't know why you're trumping. Why do you keep a trump? Why do you keep the trumps? And that's pretty much it for this week's video. I want to say thank you all so much for stopping by and checking it out. Now, a huge shout out as always to my patrons. I think the absolute world of you. Thank you all so much. I want to come up with some sort of cool name for you all as well. Um, someone come up with something on the live stream and then I can't remember what they said. Oh, I'm so terrible at remembering these things. I was going to say it and I can't quite remember. But someone said something really quite funny and it made me laugh. And I want to, I do want to kind of give you a name. Um, I am making a few changes over on Patreon to make it worth your while. And um, there's going to be gifts, goodie bags, exclusive merch that you're not going to have to buy. You're going to get gifted to you. Um, I'm going to really make Patreon a really good platform. And I'm going to make it really worthwhile. Now, that's not a plea to go out there and join it. Just stay here and just support the channel as you're doing. That means everything to me. But if you do want to go the extra mile, you can always jump onto my Patreon. And obviously the links and all that will be directly below. But thank you so much for the patrons, which I'll name here. You the MB, you the MVP. <laughs> I love you all dearly. Thank you so much for your continued support. Changes are coming. And just to keep you guys in the loop with fresh new content, I'm all about the content and I hope you guys will continue to enjoy it. Now, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like button. It just lets me know that you enjoy the content that you're watching. Also, ring the notification bell. I did it the wrong way around, aren't I? One sec. Already, please be sure to hit that like button. It just lets me know that you enjoy the content that I'm producing. Also, hit the subscribe button so you can stay in the loop when I upload. And also, ding that notification bell. And until next time, ta-ta for now. Woohoo! That's the 
camera angle been this week? I've been like questioning it. I don't know if it's because my eyes are playing up a little bit. I'm not doing very well with my eyes, hence the little squint you might have noticed. I'm in a bit of trouble with my eyes, but I can't quite work out if this camera angle is working very well. Looks okay. Then sometimes when I'm talking away to the camera, it looks really dark. I guess I'll know during editing, but I'm sorry if it's a little bit of ski whiff. Not too bad. Anyway, see you all next week.